We're still soaking in the one year anniversary of it all, which is so exciting. I can't believe how fast time flies. I mean, how would you sum up your first year as husband and wife? Oh my God, so much better than the three years leading up to becoming a husband and wife. Yeah, it was like the world's longest engagement. Um, no, it's been great. I think, you know, just the the weight lifted off our, our shoulders, you know, from a planning perspective, but also, you know, look, like relationships are a hot topic on any show. I mean, it's kind of like a an obvious opportunity to talk about something that's going to be of interest and you know, just having um, solidified it, you know, hey, we, we pulled it off um, and uh, kind of just, I, I think just relishing in the, in the, the, the fact that now we are happily married and no one's um, questioning if we're going to actually pull it off. <laughs> yeah, that must feel so nice. And Amanda, I loved that sweet little TikTok you did recently um, to Caroline Jones, So Many Skies. Uh, first of all, that would have been like a great first dance song, or like a like a walking down the aisle moment. I know. Yeah, absolutely. So, so cute. It's, how how does it feel? It's such to a no. Sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. No, you go I ahead. Said it was such a beautiful song, and um, you know, Kyle and I, we met, started dating, got engaged, and got married all around like September. And we had been together for like, what, it's like seven years. And I was going through photos um, for the, and that song, it's just like, it just all kind of came together. Yeah, no, so yeah, you guys like the milestones that uh, some photos that are, that we always kind of think back to. And she handpicked each one of those and then put it all together. I mean, are you guys the type of couple that randomly like will just start like dancing in the apartment? Or are you the couple that's like, I'm effing tired. We could just listen to music and sit separately on the couch. Because most of uh -huh. my married friends are like, we see each other enough. We can just kind of decompress next to each other. This I is the closest we've been all week. Oh, no. <laughs> no. I think it's both. It all depends on like, was it a long work day? You know, we're how are things with Loverboy? How how is our mental state? Um what's how much energy you know how much gas is in the tank yeah but i mean you guys we work together we live together we're just together all the time so yeah sometimes when we sit on the couch like we'll start like cuddling up and then within like maybe a minute five max it's like okay i'm done like feet up you're I on run your hot. side i'm on my side i know? run hot so cuddling is not my um my my forte <laughs> no, that's how my fiance is to be like, I want to cuddle in bed. And then he's like, like, please vacate the premises. I'm, I'm too hot. He like turns into like a, a like a, like a heater at night. It's so crazy. Yeah. But I think music kind of always sets the tone. Like I'm a big music guy. So I'll bet a lot of house. It's a lot of like, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> well, no, it all depends on, all depends <laughs> on the mood. classic <laughs> cuddle to house yeah. music. Yeah. Yeah. There's a time. <laughs> Beyonce place Renaissance. Where... Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God, that is so funny. Well, looking back on your wedding day and reflecting on it, what was the absolute best part? Uh, honestly, dancing, the, the dance floor. The, the, I wanted, the band, yeah, the yeah. band crushed it. I think the most music. important thing for us, we wanted it to be like a party and we just wanted to dance the whole time. We didn't want to like sit down for too many speeches or like we, you know, food. I almost wanted this to be like constant past hors d'oeuvre so no one could sit down. Everyone just had to dance <laughs> the whole time. But my parents said, We almost did that. My cousins, um, I have some Spanish cousins and they actually they did a wedding where there was no assigned seating. There wasn't even seating. It was like past hors d'oeuvres as you dance. Uh, so uh, they, we didn't we didn't get buy in or, or support for that, which I get. It's a little unconventional. But we did have everyone dancing the whole time. And I think that I still look back at like videos and photos and just seeing everyone on the dance floor like the whole time. I mean, right after cocktail hour, everyone we were still taking yeah. photos. The whole party was on the dance floor. Yeah, it's like the band just went full blown like dance party. <laughs> like immediately, and we're in the field taking these photos, looking <laughs> over at the out party. On our own thing. But um, but yeah, it's uh, I'd love to do it all again. We should do some anniversary Ooh. parties where they're just yeah. epic dance parties. It made it all worth it, just because look, the engagement was three years. We obviously were hindered by COVID time and time again. This was like the fourth or fifth date fourth or fifth venue prices were skyrocketing for everything so yeah. what you think is a nice budget just doesn't get you <laughs> but we, we stuck with it because our 
ideal scenario is to bring together the people we care about, you know, our friends and family and um good food, good yeah. music and good people. And I don't yeah. know if you guys are better people than me, but something I love to do when I'm at a wedding, you find something that you're like, oh, I wouldn't. I'm so alone. So it's just kind of a running job. I'm like, I would never do that at my wedding. But now that you guys plan a wedding and have a wedding, when you go to any, have you noticed any trends that you're like, that is not for us? I think it's more, maybe not even like a not for us type thing, but more of an appreciation for all the little details. Mm. You know, the thought that people put into the littlest things that like most people might not even notice. I feel like when you plan an event, particularly a wedding, and then you see other people's like attention to detail, it's almost, uh, even if you don't like it, it's at least a level of respect. <laughs> yeah. The biggest thing for me is long ceremonies though. Like, oh like too many speeches and too many this and too many that like when they're you know if you're not really in it it's mm -hmm. really hard to focus <laughs> yeah. and make it through so we kept ours short sweet and entertaining and that that was like the my biggest thing that I was like you know that drives me nuts at other people's weddings sorry to all my friends <laughs> that have done that. but it's hard to sit through it no, it's like when yeah. the cousin gets involved to talk, it's like, I don't know, no one cares. No. <laughs> oh, I'm like, okay, poor, poor when cousin. are we kissing and dancing and eating? <laughs> hey, well, now, now Carl and Lindsay are engaged. Their wedding is coming up. How excited are you guys for that? We are so, 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 so excited. Um, I've been like refraining from asking them when they're getting married because it's the one thing that drove me absolutely nuts as soon as we got engaged, everyone's like, so when's the wedding? I'm like, I haven't even told my mom yet. Like, what do you mean? When's the wedding? Um, so we're just, you know, relishing in the moment with them, I would say, cause it is one of the best feelings in the world to get engaged and just agree to spend the rest of your life together. And I'm so happy for them. They also probably like witnessed our planning process and they're like, here yeah, we but go. Lindsay's an event planner. <laughs> That's true. She's got it because she's good. Yeah, Lindsay's yeah. got this. She's. I feel like she was born for this. I'm not worried. What am about I saying? I, yeah, I feel like her wedding's already planned in her head too, kind of. Not yeah. and just in the way like one of those like Pinterest board people. Yeah, and that. Yeah. I feel yeah, like it was I mean, planned before her while got involved. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she has. She's had her list. She's had her timelines. Even though you know they don't exist anymore, there's definitely some sort of stash of what she wants. Carl, to Carl do. should consider himself lucky because Amanda had none of that. <laughs> my mind changes all the time i couldn't plan something back in like 2009 i would have hated it today. Well, and i know you're excited for them to have the wedding and all that stuff but is there a little part of you that's also excited to be the couple not in the hottest seat uh in your friend group that everyone is like picking apart and all that stuff yeah i mean look not that we've passed the torch um <laughs> but like i said i mean look for a long time we were like the only couple on the show consistently and like that quite frankly it's not the ideal scenario i'll be honest and just having another couple in the house forget the forget the hot seat just having another couple in the house is awesome yeah 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 it was i think kyle and i and we've talked about this like this summer too we've been one of the only long-standing you know past six seven years couple in the house to a point where we're with everyone that's single and we end up not that we act single but like we aren't together we're like our own individual people hanging out with all of our friends so as soon as there's other couples and they're doing coupley things we're like should we be should we be like holding hands <laughs> should we be doing something yeah you know? we've always like again being Trying the only be couple we, we we don't want to be like that couple that is um you know like always doing things together and like you know, PDA. So it was nice to have Carl and Lindsay like that because it made us feel comfortable again to be like, okay, we, we can be cute now too. It's like almost like inspirational. It's like, look how much they're in love. Remember we're in love also. <laughs> <laughs> Guys look so in love in the trailer for winter house season two. You're in the honeymoon stage. I mean, tell me about the experience of going to Vermont and just feeling those lovey dovey vibes. What was going on? Well, I think, I mean, look, uh... it was, so there's such thing called like the post wedding blues. It's like, you get like, you know, some people get real depressed after the wedding, um, coming off of that high. So I definitely went through that. And I think when we were going to Vermont, I was like 
on the up and up and I was like feeling better. So I had all this like new energy. We were just so happy. Everything felt like it was just going right for us. Um, and it was nice to be able to like, that was like our only trip. <laughs> it was yeah, like, we, we, here's our honeymoon to Vermont. <laughs> we, we had, I unfortunately had to go right back to work after our wedding. Like, you know, the startup doesn't just conveniently, you know, push pause for, for me, <laughs> you know, once I um, walked down the aisle. So I went right back to work. We did a teeny little, like three day mini moon at the beginning of the year, which was awesome. But like literally only took one day off. And so going to Vermont was literally our first vacation in forever. Like literally since we got engaged. Um, uh, Cause I almost don't even count the year prior. Cause I was so stressed out for, for you know, cause I stepped away from Loverboy. And like at that time we were only like five or seven employees. We were like three times the size, you know, this year around this time around. And I could actually feel like I could step away. Yeah. That was the other thing we were able to actually, you know, be in love because he wasn't focused on work that wasn't on his mind. He was able to like enjoy those two weeks off instead of stressing out about it. And I think that that energy was felt like throughout. The yeah. House. I'll never forget that first Monday of winter house season one. Like, I bring my laptop up to the, uh, to the kitchen. to the kitchen after like a big first weekend. Like we all like sent it and everyone was mad. Craig was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> and I'm like, dude, I'm in a lawsuit right now. Things are serious. He's like, I have a team for that. I'm like, yeah, well, uh, and Austin's like, Kyle's working. Should I be working? <laughs> <laughs> Does everyone just a ball of anxiety wondering like, what should I be doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then I was like, put that the hell away. <laughs> You're scaring all of us. <laughs> Wait, and I love too that the Toms made a little winter house fun happening. And I mean, I know both of them. Well, I mean, for better or for worse, they're both great and in contact with their with their ladies. Have you learned any, did they give you any relationship advice, either Tom, or did you look at them and you're like, anti-advice? Uh, I wasn't really too up to speed, quite frankly, you know, um, where, where things were at. I mean, I've always really respected the fact that like us, they've, been in these long-term relationships on the show and let's just be honest we get kind of put through the ringer um you know i don't think particularly like schwartz like i think you know katie and tom had kind of had a, a, a rough go yeah there um, were i think there were some rumors swirling at the time but um we you know they wanted to come to like hang out and just like two buddies escaping coming over to the east coast so we yeah, just wanted was like to, dude we gotta get out of LA. we came to just like show them a good time um and that's like what we focused on with them they so were actually I, we didn't supposed even, to come like, know anything really that was going on because we just knew that they wanted to have fun we were like well mm -hmm. we know how to do that so. <laughs> they almost came the first year but they were actually like signing the lease for their bar i want to say around that time and think like, things were starting to like inch towards you know um what do they call it shorts and sandies or something like that yeah. sandy and shorts <laughs> um so um i was like all right i'll circle back next year and then at that point in time particularly shorts he's like dude we need an escape let's <laughs> let's yeah, move on i'm glad that shorts had you two to kind of help him get in that fun vibe as as things were kind of like crumbling with katie uh behind the scenes and once you guys do catch wind of it it seems like you you are there to to offer support after going through that experience with schwartz do you think that they made the right decision to split up i mean look truth truth be told when it, it was that so he was. He, he, he had actually. We weren't getting the full story. Yeah, he was very much kind of cluing us in because he was kind of like like letting his guard down. It was like, a little more like was, trouble it, in paradise, and we were like, "You got this." Yeah, we. I was trying to be I'm supportive. Like, Kyle, be shitty too. You yeah. Got this. <laughs> we. I don't think we found out until we got back to New York. That I think was, that's that's when they both posted, and I actually. I, the only way I knew how to handle it, because I love them both, and I know they have respect for one another. I mean, you could see it in how they announced, you know, their separation. I text them both on the same thread. I was like, I don't know how else I would do this. You know, I love both of you. Yeah. yeah. I immediately cried. I literally was like, Amanda was in the shower. I was like, bawling my eyes out. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, like, if if Tom and Katie can't make it, because they've made it through so much, it's like, is love dead? 
You know? No, I don't. Well, I mean, like that's what I'm saying. Like I text them. I'm like, look, we can appreciate. Kyle's like fading. <laughs> like, so I know. I was like, but we can appreciate, like you know how tough it can be at times with like, you know, everything's on display and people are so critical and judgmental. You know, and that doesn't help. Let's be honest. Like if like love and relationships is tough enough, you put that front and center on TV. You know, not many people survive. I also love the energy of group texting a couple that's going through a divorce and you're waiting to answer. You're like, did I, are they going to heart it? Thumbs it up. Or are they going to text me separately? Yeah. Like, what? I was kind of like, I don't, are we sure this was the move? I didn't have a say in it. It just kind of happened. But I mean, they were actually like, I, I was actually surprised. I got like an immediate response because I'm sure they were dealing with like a lot of, of um, people yeah. kind of contacting them. Yeah. They've been able to maintain a pretty good friendship despite everything, yeah. which is really admirable, I would say. Yeah. I mean, they, they've they always said that they were, you know, best friends. So there is that, like, foundation and that friendship and that love for one another Um, that I think, you know, I don't know exactly what happened, but it's, you know, maybe the romantic part fizzled out, but that bond and that friendship and that, like, you know, respect. Yeah, respect for one another is still there, and it's a it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, and I'm curious too about um because now I mean we talked about uh Lindsay and Carl too, but there's also the Craig and Paige coupling, and everyone I mean everyone I feel like it's like it's the time where everyone's like partnering up between the two of them. Which one? Ooh, yeah. Which couple Sorry. would you feel like you're vibing a little bit more with? Would you want? Would I be like? Would we see you guys having a group dinner? <laughs> Oh, I mean, it, well, we were just with Lindsay and Carl last night for a lover boy party. I mean, I, I think there's I mean, just Paige like a, is, Paige is one of my really good friends. Um, mm -hmm. and Craig and Kyle are just idiots. <laughs> little <laughs> dumb, but old dumb. Um, but so when we the four of us get together, it's mm -hmm. it's a night, so we can't get together too often. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like every yeah, like lunar like, or that. We know where that road leads, so we have to steer clear. <laughs> We're all out of commission the next day. Um, but, you know, Lindsay, Carl, you know, we all work together. Lindsay um, is, like, so supportive. We're just always – we're together a lot, and we're around them a lot. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, I think they're like, obviously, Depends like – what kind of night we're They're in different to stages, okay. too, right? Like, you know, like, even though – Carl and Lindsay just got engaged and they were only dating for less than a year. They obviously have a long history together and they're in the same city and they're, they're at the same point in their life, what they want. Right. You know, so I think it's, they're just kind of moving at a different pace. Yeah. And I mean, like Paige and Craig, they're in a, a very specific stage of their relationship, especially when you were filming winter house season two, this was the longest they had ever spent together for an extended period. Yeah. yeah. After like spending that time with Paige and Craig, like what observations did you have about their relationship? Do you think that they're the next ones to get engaged? Like where, where is this going? I definitely think that they're on track to get engaged. I mean, they love each other. There's definitely a few, I don't think they would continue this long distance if they didn't see, right. they see the end goal going somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, but I just, you know, I get how it, can be dating a very big, loud personality that can be a lot to handle. So I just tried to support Paige through the whole thing. Um, Cause there are, you know, there are ups and downs naturally and there are frustrations. And, and I think it's part of being in love is you sometimes just want to like strangle them and tell them to <laughs> keep it together. But I mean, they survived, they made it through. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so Craig good. certainly yeah. seems like he was a little activated in Vermont for Winterhouse season two. Were you shocked by his behavior? I no. mean, he he was kind of just in chillax mode, you know, the first the first go. Um, I don't think there's much Craig can do to shock me at this point. <laughs> I think everything most shocking stuff. It's like, okay, well, that's not surprising. I mean, we're just like dramatic guys and you know so funny i told kyle that him and craig there's a lot of similarities and kyle immediately goes but i'm not a diva i was like that's the most diva thing that you can say <laughs> like hair combed was it had a pet dog you were paris hilton 
15 minutes ago holding a tiny dog in an interview. You're, and Adiba is a good thing. Adiba is a good thing. But... I know, he's got the long... Yeah, I do. Uh, I'm into it. The I'm mold. into it. That's, that's very that, nice. How can you not look at her? She's really cute. She's very, very She's cute. Least. Hi. <laughs> Oh my God. Hi. Wait, and you were talking about things shocking you and something that shocked me a little bit ago that I saw speaking of Paige and her podcast, which I'm not sure if you guys listen to or not. Um, I saw that they said, Hannah said that Lindsay is the meanest person she's ever met. And that sort of took me back because Lindsay um, like reminds me of the friend I needed in middle school when I was like fat, chubby, awkward, acne, like just defend me. What are your guys take on her being considered like the meanest person ever? I didn't, I didn't hear that. Lindsay's but. a strong, I mean, I didn't, I saw like the headline, mm -hmm. Um, but Lindsay's a strong personality. You know, she's there. She's a lot. She's a lot of emotions, whether it's love or laughter or anger or activation. Um, <laughs> so she, I, I think her and Hannah didn't get along well. And that's just kind of how she feels about her. But I think we all have our, our uh, we all have someone that we think is the meanest person we've ever met. Oh, who's your I was actually surprised to hear that because like. Kyle. <laughs> oh, yeah, I would have I I thought she'd continue her trash talking about me, but hey, maybe no, she moved. It wasn't, <laughs> the question wasn't about you. <laughs> well, <I'm making> it. <laughs> um, yeah, but you know, yeah, Lindsay, she's just, she's, she's just a larger than life personality um, in all aspects. So with that, can I say what I want to happen? You and her to reboot Roni. I don't know, bra like I'll shout it to Bravo. I think that the eyes are moving. I don't know what's happening with that, but I just think, cause you guys are entering this new phase. I know y'all love driving to the Hamptons, but a four hour car ride gets tiring after a while, I'm sure. And I, I think that would be very interesting. I don't know if you would enjoy it. saying, that. I love the Hamptons and I love living in the house with everyone. I can't just, I can't do the partying for the rest of my life. I can't keep up. So I'm down. Yeah, those three day weekends now are like, whoa. I'm down to like throw some nice events and stay in my apartment in the city <laughs> and do a really nice trip somewhere for a few <laughs> days. <laughs> so I'm on board. You have me signed up. <laughs> Yes, for sure. Have you thought about a tagline? Ooh. I have not. I should start. I should start just in case. I'm yeah. going to start brainstorming Honestly, now. You're like DMing Andy. He's like, baby, what's going on? <laughs> you're like driving to Vermont. Yeah. I feel like people go on his show and like, I think they've premeditated these taglines. I'm like, damn, that was good on the spot. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! Yeah, so yeah. Sure. yeah I I feel like I've thought about mine for like ten years and I still don't have it figured out. So <laughs> every time I think I come up with one, I'm I'm like it's not it's not right yet. It's not good enough. We're getting there. Yeah. I feel like might... she probably has her tagline ready. Oh. I feel, I feel like she's planned that out. Wait, speaking of Lindsay, actually, there is a bombshell moment in the trailer when Paige says that the night Lindsay announced she and Carl were together, there was like some canoodling with Austin. What are y'all's thoughts on that situation? Because that seems like it's going to be a situation. That's low, I, yeah, I, I'd almost rather not comment because I think we'll just have to see what plays out because quite frankly, it's one of those situations where... It was our wedding. I wasn't privy we, to we all were that stuff. Drunk and in love, and had no idea what was going on, and wasn't answering any text messages afterwards. So I have <laughs> no idea what people were talking about or who was anything. So I am. And I'm, that's also like the, when when the trailer drops, you see things you've never seen before, even when you're on the show. So also, yeah, we obviously yeah. talked about it, but then seeing it in the moment, I'm like, oh, I'm like, look at that. <laughs> Watching the season two trailer, what were you two most shocked to see that you weren't privy to while you were filming? There was a, a moment, a late night moment in the kitchen uh, with All a right. large group and Kyle and I were Passed out. in bed. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Craig, don't worry. He came in at five or three in the morning and woke us up and filled us in. Filled us in, and then asked oh. if he left his cell phone in our bed. Um, but to see that, you know, there's there's Craig's story, and then there's what we watched, and mm. uh, from the clip, it seems he, you know, might be pretty 
spot on. Craig can fabricate a story, loves telling a good story, but this one seems pretty accurate. So we'll see. I actually like that aside. I, um, I thought it was one of the best trailers I've ever seen. Cause I just thought it was hilarious. Like it, we had a ton of fun. It's great. It's like a, it's like a two week marathon. That's also a sprint. How we do it. I have no idea. Like when you're in college, spring break is one week. Somehow we've turned this show into two. Uh, and we're old. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a tough, it's a tough one to to participate in. in it's definitely film, taking years off my life. But I think this winter was a lot of fun. Like we just had a blast the whole time. Um, and I think it's going to be really fun for people to watch. Ooh, yeah, I'm excited for that. Yeah. And also, when, speaking of things that are on right, are you watching Beverly Hills right now? Because I know you're a Bravo girl. I am. I, this summer, for whatever reason, I get like, when I'm filming, I can't watch reality TV because it stresses me out. I have to catch up. I'm so behind and I'm so mad about it. Because I'm curious. I wanted to know if you were a Kathy or a Rinna side of history. Right now. I'm, I mean, originally, I've always just like loved Kathy. I just, I don't know what's going on. So I can't give a real valid answer. But if, you know, I just hear the Congo line stuff and I wish I participated in that. Congo I think line. Kathy should be on Summer House because she just wants to party, apparently. And Kathy should have a great time on Summer House. I, Kathy needs to come to Vermont for two what weeks. little I've and seen. And do all the Congo lines. I don't think I've seen any of this season because if she hasn't been watching it, then I sure as heck haven't <laughs> seen anything. But uh, her first season, um, which was like Aaron, what, like a year ago, I, she just was making me laugh like no other housewife has ever made me laugh. So... If she wants to come out to the Hamptons, uh, we'll play some martini jokes. Okay, but other. whose team are you on? So I need to go into it, like, just with, I need to know. Danny, I don't even know if we've talked about this, but who, what team are you on? From from what we are seeing, I'm on Team Kathy. From things I've heard online, I, I will, I will, yeah, I will be in the air. But I think I'm, I'm, I'm Kathying it up. Right. It's tough. The, the blogs and the, the gossip and what you're reading and seeing mm -hmm. versus what you're actually watching. It right, like, just because I always think show. who would Venmo me more and Kathy Hillen would Venmo me more. So that's why I'm on her team. <laughs> yeah. Watching the show, I'm definitely team Kathy, but if I were to just go off of everything like I've read and everything circulating on the Bravo blogs, I'm inclined to believe Rinna. So it's a really tough situation because it's also one of those situations where it wasn't caught on camera. What Rinna is yeah. on so it's just they need weird. surveillance like y'all yes they should have yeah. taken summer house winter house approach somehow all the housewives are like shut up kyle shut up <laughs> <laughs> well okay so kathy hilton for next season but what about the newbies for this season thoughts oh, yeah. and feelings about the new faces on winter house season two who did we love who did we maybe clash with like what what what's the vibe we loved everyone kyle and i i think we always love everyone i mean kyle gets a i don't think there's very few people that Kyle doesn't get a, a in lot life, with, let alone TV. Life, but like, yeah. um, I mean, it was, you know, Rachel. We we met Rachel a couple of weeks before our um our actual wedding day because our floor our original floors backed out. Rachel saved the day. She was just this cool ass chick. Again, we had this mutual friend, and kind of formed a, a friendship from there. So she joined us. Um, she is also like the coolest person in the whole entire world we got like drinks after the wedding because i didn't really talk to her much um wedding planning because she was you know dealing with the planner um and she's just like she's so cool like just everything about her she just like radiates like coolness to like be um, a florist you have to be so cool like that's just that like she, yeah and she was like she was like in fashion she just everything about her i'm like i want to be you when i get older um <laughs> when i grow up. when i grow up. <laughs> um, yeah and then we have Corey and jess who are like just also two huge fun personalities um we had a crazy group of people and a crazy fun house and every single new person was like chef's kiss like everyone just <laughs> sent it Wait, for two when, I saw, when i saw andrea wasn't on anymore i was upset because i hope when andrea okay. wasn't on anymore i was a little upset because i mainly just love looking at him so i'm glad that there's some more fun people in the mix no but andrea's coming to BravoCon. okay i like we'll i was like there. he's either coming to BravoCon or starting an only fans either way i'm happy for him yeah <laughs> so you'll get to see more of it that beautiful face and that beautiful body <laughs> 
the guy who's doing the flips that's what's his name Corey. 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 okay he is also looking beautiful to me too so if you know that that's a body that is easy on the eyes as well i don't know where craig's been hiding him all these years but uh he he was a great addition. Well, I think Corey had to settle down a little bit, and this is him settled down. Yeah, I, I, Corey, oh. yeah, like five must have been settled. not set. I mean, settle down like Mentally. energy wise. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he like, and he's still he's a he's a, a firecracker. Miss Chad, you never know. Great. Yeah, you need people with those high high energy, and it can't always just be Kyle. Yeah, because- I. Anytime there's like a another kind of like you know, party animal or someone who really embodies like, like, let's make this count, right? Like, let's have as much fun as possible. Like, I'm like, thank God someone else is here to like be the energizer bunny because it gets tiring. (laughs) Because you're almost like, yeah, guys, let's do it. As you're like having an inhaler, like falling asleep. And you're like, no, keep it going. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I'm like, let's do it again. Roll it back. Oh, God. (laughs) So how do you envision the vibe to be at BravoCon with everyone reuniting is it's going to be absolutely contagious the energy is going to be absolutely insane i think it's going to be awesome i mean we've waited like us the fans everyone has waited for this to come back again that first year was such a tease and it was smaller but it was do it again it got canceled it was like is it ever going to happen and now it's like almost like what three to four times the size of that first year the but everyone energy... just makes everyone makes friends like people in line like the fans like they make friends with the people in front of them behind them like that there's just like incredible yeah i think like, the good energy vibes. is gonna be it's gonna be like that rubs overwhelming off on, on the talent and empowering in a good way yeah, I know. Yeah. Danny and I will both be there. We can't wait to see your panel. I think um Donald from Bravo is he's moderating. Oh. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's yeah what, no, that's we love fun. him. He's I'm, a... told, I'm told there might be a tease. Um Ooh. Uh, not lover boy tease. A tease. Yeah. Lover boy will not be there. Um other tease. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, oh, a phrase is worth a thousand words. <laughs> <laughs> but well i i love teasing about lover boy is there anything you guys are excited about in the future or are you kind of like heads down lip sealed until more reveals oh we are very we just had a variety pack launch party we have four new flavors coming out um it'll be nationwide what by the end of october yeah so we we have um you know our our, our flagship product which is what it where it all started is our, our sparkling hard teas um, we have four flavors that are sold in six packs. We just launched a variety pack of four totally different flavors. There's something for everybody. They're so um, good. We had some of the biggest we'll have to get you guys. Some, some of the biggest yeah, retail yeah. chains yeah. in the country take it nationwide. So I mean, that's what we've been busy doing is just lining up distribution um and expansion. And the other exciting thing is that our spritz and cocktails, which used to only be available online are now being sold in stores yep. so you can buy them by like just the four pack there's no like shipping fees. no minimum order quantity or none shipping, of that stuff so, so you can try it um that's the thing so many people watch summer house i feel like every single person i know drinks lover like it's truly uh-huh. it's everywhere it's so it, good and it's like, actually, actually such very, very good. good like it is my like my drink of choice like white claw who <laughs> that means a lot. I tell Kyle, I mean, I'm very picky with the way that our product tastes. And if I don't want to drink it, I don't want to put our name on it. I think other brands are just like signing off like, oh, we want this flavor, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. just go with it. Um, If it's off to me, I doesn't go. Yeah, we market. like, you know, I think it's a good thing so- to be OCD about the you know, the quality of the product. Uh So I'm glad that you guys like it. And not every flavor is for everyone and that's okay. I don't like every flavor. That's why we got different flavors. Yes, that's why there's a variety pack. It's like a, it's like a cast. You don't like everybody on the cast, I'm sure, but we're all together. You deal with it. Exactly. (laughs) Now get in, you move on. Yeah, it's hundred percent. Yeah, no, but I, uh, thank you guys. We, uh, we love Loverboy and we love the support from everyone. Support's amazing. I mean, you know, we're obviously in a very competitive industry that is not very startup friendly, quite frankly, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, and I don't think we could do it without the 
the incredible fans that are willing to try the product and thank God it's good and they buy it again. Yeah. And the coolest thing is that we've seen is uh, people who have started watching the show because they drink Loverboy. Oh, I one of my friends Bravo. literally did that. She's like, have you ever yeah, heard of like, Loverboy? I'm like, bitch. I'm full circle. Yeah. <laughs> That's really <laughs> cool. Wow. Yeah. So that, that like makes us, you know, you feel more legit. It's like someone's buying the product that has no idea who we are. Nice. We were in a store once. And someone was buying what Topo Chico and Loverboy, and we were behind them and check out. And Kyle was like, "Oh, have you ever tried that?" And the girl was like, "No, it's like it's my first time trying this one, but I love Loverboy." Like, had no idea who we were. Oh, yeah, and then that that's honestly, really the good. goal, like, yeah. So that's cool. Wow, that's awesome. I'm so proud of you guys, and you. I really don't even know you very well, but I, I, I love everything you've accomplished during your your time together, your time on the show. And um, Danny and I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with us today. Absolutely. Thank, you no, thank you guys. It was fun chatting.